Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In this video, we're going to discuss how to hide notebook tabs in Tkinter. There are two different ways we can achieve this, each with a slightly different effect. All right, so let's get started. Here is our window. We have a basic notebook, okay? And we have five tabs that we have created in it, okay? The window is mostly empty right now, just these five tabs, okay? So let's try and hide these. The first approach that we'll look at is basically a complete annihilation of all tabs. Okay, it's going to completely remove them. Okay, you can't see them anymore. All right, this is how it's done. You create a style object okay, using ttk.style. Then what you do is disable this style because each widget in ttk, okay, ttk is the submodule in Tkinter where the notebook is, you know, where it comes from. So each widget, each TTK widget has a set of styles. So all we need to do is disable the styles for the notebook, okay? The notebook tab. So once we do that, like this, T notebook, T notebook is for the notebook, but we don't want to disable the styles for the notebook. We want to disable the styles for the notebook tab. So we're gonna do dot tab, okay? This is the format, and then we're gonna pass in the styles. The second parameter is where the styles go, and usually this is a pretty long. There's different styles, different settings, colors, padding that you apply, but we're just gonna pass in an empty list over here. We're basically overwriting the existing styles with this, with an empty list, with empty styles. If we do this and run our code, and that is what happens when you create the style object before the taking to application. Okay, so let's try that again. And there we go. They're all gone. Okay, pretty cool, right? So this is one way of doing it. And then uh, once this happens, obviously you can't click on them anymore. Okay, there's no point in doing that. You'll have to resort to uh, something else. You can manually switch the notebook tabs around. Uh, maybe you have some kind of feature for that. That's why you are, were hiding the tabs in the first place. That's up to you. Let's take a look at the second method. The second method is more of a partial way of hiding tabs because you might not want to hide all of the tabs. Maybe you just want to hide some tabs. Maybe you just want to limit the number of tabs that are currently being shown. So what we'll do right now is develop a application where we only show three tabs at a time. And these buttons that I declared earlier, back and forward, we'll use them to uh, move back and forth, okay? Moving forward will show us one more, one more tab, okay? It'll hide the first tab and show us the fourth, okay? And then when we go back, it's gonna uh, hide the fourth and then reveal the first, okay, like that. Now, what we're gonna do, is make use of the hide method. Actually, right here, what we'll do first is hide the fourth and fifth notebook tab, okay, like this. And we'll just remove this, okay, or comment it out. And then over here, remove the fifth one. So now we only have three tabs. You'll also notice that the size of the window decreased. And that's because even if we explicitly declare a width and height over here, if the number of tabs is greater, okay, like if, they, if they're not fitting inside the window, then it's gonna end up expanding the notebook. So we might actually end up with more than this specified width, which actually happened in the start. So this is one reason why you actually might wanna limit the number of tabs being shown. All right, so let's take a look at this now. Now, when someone presses back, what we want to do is um, first check which index is currently selected. Okay, index is equal to self dot notebook dot uh, index self dot notebook dot select. This will give us the index of the currently selected frame. Okay, it's zero. And this, if we switch to notebook tab two, we should print out one and notebook tab three is two. Okay, good. So what we first wanna say that if 
index is less than uh, if index uh, let's 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 create first let's create the forward one first all right I'm just gonna copy paste this over here it might be useful now what we're gonna do is basically unhide one of the tabs okay we could just do something like this select and then pass in self dot fourth because the fourth one is the next one that should show up right so if I click fourth, uh, sorry, forward, then the fourth one does show up. But interestingly, the notebook widget does not resize. Uh, but obviously, we, we need to hide the first one now, right? So we could just go ahead and do this. Okay. And now, see, that works. Notebook tab two, three, four. But this is obviously hard coding. We're not going to do that. I just wanted to show you that you could select or hide. Sorry, select. Uh, I already showed you hide. But you can select uh, something by just passing in the object itself. Okay, the tab. There are other ways of doing it. For example, you can simply select the index. Okay, index plus one. So what we could do with this is... Uh, do this okay and then forward forward okay now we're on notebook tab three and then forward now we're on notebook tab four okay so this is another way of using the select function and another way of unhiding a notebook tab is just using the add function again okay now let's make sure we properly hide the old tab so we'll say something like if index is greater than two okay uh greater than two i think this should be it then self dot notebook dot hide index minus two did i get that right let's see okay forward forward no no uh, i think we should do that yeah okay now this notebook tab two notebook tab three and no that uh, didn't work. Strange. I, I, I can't even see which tab that is. Let me just increase the width a bit. Okay. Cool. Uh -huh. That goes to net, to tab 5. And I need to add in some error handling over there. If index is less than 4. Okay. Uh, that will prevent any errors coming up over there. Okay, this needs a bit, a little bit of tweaking. All right, so here is the final code. I just paused the video and tested it until it was complete. It was taking a little too long. All right, so here is the final code for back and forward. I'm just gonna run the code and show you guys one more time. Okay, forward, back. Okay, no errors at any point. Even if I click back multiple times over here at tab one, or forward multiple times at tab five. Okay. This is the code. Just take a look at it and you'll understand how it works really. There's just checks over here to ensure we don't go above the maximum, that we don't go above the minimum, and these are here to basically so that we don't hide or show something that isn't meant to be shown or hidden. Okay. Again, pretty simple logic. So yeah, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new today. See you guys in the next video.